Well, who saw that one coming? Spurs blew out the Golden State Warriors 129 to 100 at Oracle Arena, making it four straight losses dating back to game five of the NBA Finals <laughs> for the Golden State Warriors. There's a million different reactions that uh, people have had to this one game. Uh, so I'm going to once again go quote from Deadspin. And then we're going to get into the game. The quote from Deadspin is, first game of the season, right? Uh, it takes super teams time to gel. We know this. Miami Heat in 2010-2011 were 9-8 and eight before they went on to make the NBA Finals, that kind of thing. Uh, overreaction, overreaction. You look at the Spurs team last year, right? So they lose Tim Duncan. And then they just, like, Tony Parker looked, Tony Parker pre-cheating on Eva Longoria. Mm-hmm. Like, he looked phenomenal. Um and I think that the one thing about the Spurs is that they were so versatile. Like, when you look at Simmons, who, by the way, channeled his inner LeBron James for easily the play of the game when yeah. he blocked uh, Steph Curry. But they just looked confident. They looked, obviously, they had that same mechanical ball movement, but they were taking threes that were going in. They were using Mills. They were using Marcus Aldridge. And Kawhi Leonard just looks, by far and away, easily the best player on that court. Like, yes. it was, wasn't even close. End-to-end. Um, and I think that the Spurs overall should just be looked at in this game as the biggest threat to the Golden State Warriors. Now, are you going to talk about this without mentioning Golden State? Of course not, but it, it, you're right. It's well, just that overreaction. I think here. that Charles Barkley kind of made the best point about it is that, yeah, you, people are going to overreact. And when you have a super team, you're prone to overreaction because you've got that team that everyone expects to click. I don't think it was anything to do with their attacking ability. I thought that Kevin Durant obviously scored the most points. Mm-hmm. Steph Curry and Clay Thompson took less uh, in comparison to what they used to, but their rebounding and their defensive capabilities are the biggest problem. That's it. No, I don't think anybody foresaw a 29-point blowout, Mm -hmm. but you shouldn't be surprised that the Warriors lost this game, and you shouldn't be surprised that there's growing pains. What you had to look at, what you were saying a couple days ago, well, what was working? Kevin Durant moved more in that game than he ever did Mm -hmm. on the Thunder, and I mean ever. Kevin Durant sometimes sat in the corner with the Oklahoma City Thunder as Russell Westbrook, the usage percentage that he was having with the team. Kevin Durant moved. You should be scared at times because there's a lot of the uh, uh, situations where Durant or Curry or Clay had open lanes to the hoop. And they also had a lot of problems finishing at the rim very early on. So these aren't excuses for the Warriors uh, because if you're watching the game and you're watching what's working, there was a lot of movement that should be taken as a huge plus because Kevin Durant's going to fit very, very well into that Warrior system. Uh, and there's going to be shots to go around. And in about 15 to 20 games, we're going to laugh at the fact that they got blown out by 29 points yeah. because they're going to blow out other teams. All right, we have some fun things to get to. For one, there was the Kawhi Leonard meme, uh, which is great. And it's uh, Kawhi Leonard. Oh, no. Gets a new career high of points. And apparently a new family. Oh, oh, come on, guys. So early. Come on, man. Next, even another great one. <laughs> 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 the Players' Tribune. <laughs> My oh, next chapter. Great. I put out a Twitter poll yesterday, so I shamelessly grabbed it for this. How many headlines tomorrow that KD is the problem? I, who are the people who are like 2%, like five? There will be 500 headlines tomorrow. Back. I think there's going to be 500. I didn't think anybody was going to vote in it. I was shocked there was 150 people who voted in it. Uh, and then... There's some other really quick things to talk about from NBA tip-off, because my biggest takeaway didn't come from either of these games at all. I had two other takeaways altogether. Uh, Damian Lillard had 39 points, 9 boards, and 6 assists, I believe. What? Against the Jazz, the deepest team in the league. The the Utah Jazz! Here's some, like, really fun hot takes. The Utah Jazz, they're going to be the third best team in the Western Conference. They need to work on some things. Uh, Specifically, they have to find a better way to use all of their length. Yeah, They're a lanky, big, long team. Rodney Hood, though, looked good. Put up a lot of points last night, too. Uh, but that was the Damian Lillard show, and it was awesome to watch. Even more importantly, the biggest takeaway anybody should have had, because there isn't a new Kevin Durant in this team. The fact of the matter is the Cavs are the best team in the league. Yeah, And uh, whether it be the Knicks or, you know, uh, by the way, nine, the other super team in the league, they were, remember, the Heat, 9-8, 2010, 2011. The Knicks, maybe 9-8 and eight to start the season, still win 60 games. NBA champions. Uh, I did see some things I liked about the Knicks yesterday. I did like the pace they were playing at specifically the most, more than anything else. It was fun. Uh, Carmelo Anthony looked like he was uh, really not exactly revitalized at times, but there was a great play in which Derrick Rose threw it right behind his head to find Melo in the corner. Melo hits the three, and they all got back on defense. I was like, that's some Jeff Hornacek. Good basketball. I like that. Uh, But the Cavs are the best team in the league right now after one game. 
they look like they are better than they were last year. They're all fresh, of course, but like Mike Dunleavy was a smart signing. You know, J.R. Smith's getting better and better every year at transition defense. LeBron James had a triple-double in the opener. And the Cavaliers championship rings. Remind the world that the Warriors blew a 3-1 lead by showing which of the seven games they won in, like, uh, <laughs> what's the maroon stone in a ring usually? Ruby? A ruby? A ruby. I believe there's <clears> four rubies for the ones that they won. That was my biggest takeaway, by the way, was the Cavs, undoubtedly, at 15 minutes. It's the NBA. People love it. Comment below, like, favorite, subscribe to the channel. Lots of good stuff that happened yesterday. I couldn't do this clip without mentioning Damian Lillard because it's a shame that no one's going to talk about it today. And he also had a good song that is now the intro on NBA and TNT. Dame Dollar's song. Dame, Dame Dollar's, Dollar's album. And he was like doing this weird uh, fake skydiving thing when he was singing it. But I was into it. Comment below.